Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to be continuing discussing the topic of classes versus objects. We're going to have a review of what classes and objects are and the differences between the two, um, because that's going to become important when we learn about what's known as static properties and static methods. Um, it's so far what we've been working with, um, as you'll find out, have been known as instant properties and instance methods. They're uh, properties of a class and methods of a, of a class that are relate to a specific instance of that class. We're going to learn about something a little different. It's on more of a class level. Uh, we're going to talk about an operator called the scope resolution operator, which is going to allow us to access these static properties and methods that we're going to learn about. And then we're also going to learn about um, constants in classes. We know about uh, being able to define constants in our regular PHP files. We're going to learn about how to define them on a class level, uh, at the class level. Uh, so basically, a class, as we know, is a, essentially a user-defined data type. Um, and when you create an object, you're creating, what you're doing is creating an instance of that class. You're providing, um, you're basically instantiating almost like a, a copy of that class, and you're filling in the, the values for the properties of it. Um, essentially, what, we, what you have between a class and objects is a one-to-many relationship. You have one class definition, and you can have as many different object instances of that class as you need. Uh, the class sort of provides the template, and the objects are sort of the realization of that class. Um, but in the case of uh, each instance, uh, each instance is essentially, as we had mentioned, is basically their own version of that class. So they have their own version of all of the property. So for example, we've learned about object properties. Um, object properties defined in a class definition, um, they get initialized and set um, when you create or instantiate an object. Um, those properties are specific to that particular instance. So each instance of an object has its own copy of, for, for example, if a person object had the first name property, each object, uh, person name object, person object you create um, would have its own copy of the first name property and it'd be specific to that instance. And so for that reason, uh, we haven't specifically called them that, but the distinction is going to become clear today, is those are known as instance properties. So all of the properties that we've been dealing with so far with our classes are known as instance properties. They're properties that are um, specific to each instance of a class. And basically, each time you instantiate uh, a, a class as an object, um, it gets its sort of own copy, own version of those properties. Those are, and they'll be referred to as instance properties. Uh, static properties is sort of what we're going to talk about today. And um, static properties are kind of in a way they're like class properties. Um, they're basically uh, properties that are shared, whose values are shared between all of the instances of a particular class. So whereas you might have uh, in your class definition you have a first name, uh, or let's say in our person class we have a first name property. Well that's an instance variable if we, if we define it as we have been. Um, and that means that it's a per instance property, meaning that basically each instance of that class has, has, its, own, has its own copy of that um, property. However, a static property is a per class, meaning that there's basically one property defined in that class definition that all of the different instances um, have access to, but it's, it's, not, it's not like they get their own individual copy. So basically, if one class updates this static property, um, of the, or one instance of a class updates a static property of the class, it affects all the other classes and that they basically all read that same value. Um, the way you declare a static property in a class definition is using the static keyword. So whereas before um, we'd sort of just been saying public num people and that would be our property definition, now, now we're adding the static keyword. We're saying public static num people and we're giving it an initial value of zero. So basically what the statement says, we're declaring a public property that's a static property. Um, it's going to be called num num people and its initial value is zero. And this would be contained within a class definition just with all your other properties. Um, one other thing to note about um, static properties is because they're not specific to an instance of the class, uh, they're, in, they're relate to the entire class or basically all of the different uh, instances of that class, you don't actually have to have an instantiated object in order to access them. Normally, for example, Let's say we have a person class, and it had a property first name, for example. Well, to access that first name property, we would write something like this. 
And what this is is a reference to an instance, uh, to this instance of the person object that was created. Well, um, and that's why it's called actually an instance variable because this copy of first name is specific to this A variable right here. Well, because static properties uh, aren't specific to a particular instance, you don't actually reference them uh, using, using an object variable. And we're going to uh, see about that in the next slide about how you actually access them.